Experience the excitement with Kodiak Sports. I'm Alyssa Pudney. And I'm David Opinko. The men's Kodiak's basketball team has seen a great season so far, reaching second place in the ACAC. E -News, e News reporter Taylor Wall has more on how the team was able to reach such a level of success. The big hammer slammer jammer! The Kodiak men's basketball season is coming to an end. This year's success is something Lethbridge College hasn't seen in quite some time. The Kodiaks need just one win against the Olds College Broncos to clinch second place in the South Division in the ACAC. This is Kodiak forward Peter Danielson's final year with the squad. He says it means a lot for his team to be in second place in his final year. I started off my first two years of my career not making playoffs, so last two years I've been really fortunate to make it. And it's a good experience. It's really fun. Leading scorer Chaz Johnson feels confident for the playoffs and says his team just needs to stick to their game plan. With a three-pointer. Uh, take the momentum from uh, beating Briarcrest last weekend and just building off that and playing as a team and keep uh, trying to reach our peak right before playoffs. So these are some key games for us. Head coach Ryan Heggie says a big part of his team's success is the chemistry it has formed over the years. All college teams have a lot of talent, right? But if they can work together, they can, their talent's going to come out better. If they get along and share the basketball, et cetera, et cetera, talk on defense, be a team. Being just two points behind first place Red Deer, the Kodiaks know they have a great shot at winning provincials and moving on to nationals. We have a system that we put in at the start of the year, and, and we just try to stick with that system and get better and better and better and tweak it a little bit. The Kodiak's confidence shows this team believes that they can achieve anything. I don't think anyone can beat us. I think we can beat ourselves. Uh, if you make playoffs in our league, anybody can beat anybody on every, any give, given night. Uh, so, you know, once you get there, it's you find out who you play a week in advance and you just prepare for them, that's all. For Kodiak News, I'm Taylor Wall. Both the Kodiaks and the Broncos will be part of this year's ACAC Championships, taking place next weekend in Nate in Edmonton. So, welcome back to the show. Uh, we're going to get underway with the Kodiaks men's basketball team right game right away. I'm David Opinko. And I'm Melissa Pudvay. So we'll start off with the roster for the Kodiaks. So normally for the Kodiaks, here we go with the starting lineup for the Broncos, my bad. So number six, Sam Kirkness. We have Philip Jalapur, Kilio Faze, John Dubet, and then Kyle Huffman for the Broncos. And on the Kodiak side, we have we have number five Travis Butt, number six Tra Chaz Johnson, um, number eleven Phil J Phil Jamon, and number thirteen Chris Mon. So Alyssa, what do you think of this game so going into it? I think going into this game, our boys are pretty confident. You know. They've done well. Last night they had a fairly huge lead on the Broncos. Same with the girls though. So hopefully this game doesn't go as bad as the girls one. You know, I feel like our boys are confident once again. You know, they haven't been doing as good as the female team has. But normally I feel like this is actually going to be a good game for the boys. I feel that they're going to step it up. They they don't want to have a double loss on home court. And so do you think the Broncos might be going into this game with a little bit of renewed confidence, seeing as the women's team emerge victorious? I feel like the boys want to prove that they can both do that as well. I'm, I completely agree. I think the boys might have took a little confidence, uh, took some confidence from the girls since the girls have won now. So they all seem to be smiles and giggles now, but I guess we'll see what happens during the game. Yeah. All right, so we got the ball. Ball goes to number five. Number, my bad, number seven. Morgan Gunderson. Chaz Johnson has the ball playing it down to Chris Mon. Chris Mon passes it to Chaz Johnson. Chaz Johnson going in, passing it to Chris Mon. Ball goes off of number seven. Peter Danielson will be throwing the ball in for the Kodiaks. Peter Danielson is actually a fifth year. He was awarded last night for his contribution to the team. We have number seven of the Broncos, Philip Jalapur, coming down the court with the ball. 
Jalapur is a second year and he's originally from Colombia. Broncos take the first goal of the game. We have Travis Butt coming down the court. Travis Butt is originally from Pincher Creek, just an hour away from here. Peters going in for a basket is shut down by number 10, John Dumitz. Peter Danielson throwing the ball in again, passing it to Travis. Travis taking a three point shot, missing. Chris Mon trying to steal the ball back. Both teams fumbling to try and get the ball. Jalapur gets the ball, passing it to Khalil. Khalil missing his shot, giving it right to the Kodiaks. Travis Butt going in for the basket. We got a foul being called. Foul goes to number 22 on the Broncos, Kyle Huffman. Travis Butt gets the ball, bringing it in. Trying to pass it off, giving it to Peter. Peter passes it to Mon. Mon goes up for the basket, missing. Trying to get it back, passing it to Johnson. Johnson passes it out, bust. Bud shoots and oh. makes his first try oh. of the game. Right there. Got yeah. some good energy from the crowd tonight. They're looking to will on the Kodiaks and try, and try to will them to a victory. Shot from number nine, Khalil, missing it. Chaz is taking the ball down for the Kodiaks. We got a hold being called on the Broncos. Broncos are already two fouls in to the game. And it goes to number seven, Philip Jalapur. We got Chaz Johnson coming down with the ball, passing it to Mon. Mon throws it in. Passing it to Danielson. Danielson makes a basket. Kodiaks are in the lead, five to two. Looks like both teams are looking a little aggressive early on in the game. So we have number nine, Khalil Fez shooting. Foul goes to number eight, Geo. Sorry, number eight of the Kodiaks, Peter Danielson. He gets his basket as well. Kodiaks are in the lead by one point. Chaz is taking the ball, bringing it around, passing it to Travis. Travis passes it to Mon. Mon goes up, tries to shoot. Yeah. Basket counts. Yeah. Foul goes to number 12, Joe Michel. Mon's about to take the foul shot. He is the top scorer for the Kodiaks this season, making an average of 15 points per game. And Just like that. Showing really what he can do. We got Khalil coming down, passing it out to number six, Sam Kirkness. Back to Sam Kirkness. Sam Kirkness misses the ball, bringing it down. Peter Danielson passes it to Chaz. Chaz is going down the court, passing it to Danielson. Danielson makes, tries to shoot, misses it. Back to Chaz. Chaz is trying to set up a play. Passing it to Butt. Passing it out to Gunderson. Gunderson taking a shot, missing. Passing it out to Mon. Mon is getting the rebound. Passing it out to Chaz. Chaz takes a shot, misses. We 
got Khalil throwing it into Jalapur. Jalapur taking the ball up the court. Jalapur passes it to Khalil. Khalil passes it to Dumitz. Dumitz takes a shot and makes it. Chaz bringing the ball up to the court for passing it to Gunderson. Gunderson makes the basket for the Kodiaks. Kodiaks are in the lead 10 to six. Jalapur passes it to Khalil. Khalil's taking it up the court for the Broncos. Already we've seen some amazing plays from both teams. Oh. <laughs> now both teams are pretty experienced. Most players for both teams are at least in their second year. I think that experience is gonna result in a great game from both sides here. We have number nine of the Broncos taking a shot, Khalil Fias. He's a first year and he's from Toronto. Makes his basket. We got Gunderson throwing it in, throwing it in it to Taylor. Taylor passes it to Johnson. Johnson brings the ball up the court. Passing it to Butt. Butt passes it to Taylor. Taylor passes it to Danielson. Danielson to Johnson. Johnson takes a shot and makes it. Three point basket for the Kodiaks. As you can see right there, Chaz Johnson is the Kodiaks best three point scorer, making an astounding 46 three point throws this season. And you can see right there just why. got some substitutions for the Kodiaks. We have Colton Murray coming on the court now. Chaz pa passes it to Butt. Passing it out to Taylor. Taylor passes it to Johnson. Johnson passes it to Taylor once again. Pass it to Murray. get the point. Kodiaks are coming up strong this game. Khalil has the ball, making his basket. Danielson passes it to Johnson. Johnson carries the ball up for the Kodiaks, passing it back to Danielson. Danielson to Taylor, back to Johnson. Murray, Murray takes a three-point shot, misses it by just a hair. Danielson's got the ball, passing it to Johnson once again. Johnson takes the shot, missing. Passes to Murray, Murray to Taylor, missing, and there we go, we got a foul shot for the Kodiaks. That's some substitutions for the Kodiaks coming in. Number 12, Will Hickey, and number 21, Chase Tomey. <laughs> Taylor makes his baskets. And is another one. Kodiaks have a decent lead going on right now. It's 17 to nine. Hopefully they can keep this going. We got Chase bringing up the ball. Passing it out to, to Murray. Murray back to Tommy. Tommy to butt. Butt to Murray again. Murray tries to take a shot, missing it. Ball goes out. Little under half left in the first period. Kodiaks are up 17 to nine. We have Khalil taking the ball down the court for them. 
tossing it out by accident. Butterfingers over there. So we have number 13 for the Broncos throwing it in, Anthony Hetzman. Passing it out to number 12, Joe Michel. Passing it to Khalil, bringing it back to number 13. Back to Khalil, Khalil takes a shot, missing. We have Khalil shooting his first shot, making it. And he's making another one. So we got Murray throwing the ball in, throws it to Tommy. Trying to pass it to Hickey, pass was a fail, blocked by Khalil. Khalil passes it out to 13, Huntsman. Taylor's got the ball, passing it to number 23 of the Kodiaks, Rob Finley. Back to Finley, Finley takes a shot, missing it. Khalil's got the ball, bringing it down for the Kodiaks, attempts a shot, misses. Back to Khalil. Number 13, Heinzman takes it, makes that's it. That's gonna tie things up 17 to 17. Chase has the ball, passing it to Hickey. Hickey trying to find someone to pass to. The boys seem to be losing their mojo. They had quite a fair lead up ahead, and now it's tied. Falls with Khalil right now, taking a shot, missing. Taylor's got it, passing it to Tony. Tony, to, and now we got a foul. Passing it to Finley. So we have Robbie Finley taking a foul shot. He makes his first. And his second one. Kodiaks are now ahead by one basket. Oh, Khalil makes a basket. Out to Murray. Murray to Finley. Finley out to Hickey. Hickey takes a shot, making it three point basket for the Kodiaks. 22 to 19. Passing it out to number 23, Shaquille. Out to Taylor for the Kodiaks. Passing it to Chase. Chase passes it to Taylor out to Murray. Murray takes a three point shot, missing. Passing it now to Anthony Heinzman. Heinzman tries to pass it out to his teammate, number 23, Shaquille Bedminster. Out to Jo Michel. Jo Michel takes a shot and makes it. We got Will Hickey coming down the court. Hickey passes it. Coming back now on the Broncos side. Number 23 Shaquille's got the ball, passing it off to Khalil. Uncle's looking to even things up with just a couple seconds left in the first quarter. 
We have a rowdy crowd today trying to jinx the teams, both sides, for the female and male. Absolutely, it's a really important game for, for every team playing today. We gain the momentum necessary to make a really good showing in the ACAC Championships next weekend. We got Will Hickey now passing it out. <laughs> Both teams get shut down. That was a pretty good first quarter now. Obviously our Kodiaks are now underneath by one point. They only need to make one more basket to take the lead. Our boys really need to put in the effort because, you know, having two losses on home turf is not something that we want to experience. We want to at least come out of this game with a one game win from our males. And, you know, both of our teams were very capable of beating the Broncos, but it just seems like today is just a little, we're having a rougher time. Perhaps, and we're going to take a look at some of the highlights of the game so far. So we have the ball coming down, us passing it out to Butt. Butt back to Taylor. Taylor to Danielson. Danielson back to Chaz. Chaz taking a three point shot and making it. Chaz is a phenomenal player for getting his three point shots. He rarely, rarely, rarely misses them. And he also is a really well rounded player. He passes, he plays the game, and you know, he's not a ball hog, you know, and Absolutely. a lot of a lot of his teammates really trust him with the ball. So even if it does seem like he is a ball hog, it's because the team's letting him be. Yeah, Johnson's made almost half of all throws that he's done this entire season. So certainly one of the best players that the Kodiaks have had in quite some time. Exactly, yeah. And actually, Chaz is originally from Spokane, Washington. He came here um, after he was on the U of L Broncos, choosing the Kodiaks uh, just for the, the better experience in the college life. It's, you know, more intense. I certainly think he's found a welcome home here with the Kodiaks. I agree, yes. He's done very well on the team, and he's also one of their top players as well. So he's doing fairly well for himself. We have the court, the boys coming back onto the court, getting ready to start the game. Hopefully this next quarter, they can really step it up, bring the game around, and in all, just win the, win the game. You know, it's very important for them, especially with playoffs and everything around the corner. Yeah, still got three quarters of the game left, so it can really go either way from here. Exactly. You just never know what's going to happen. See if this, uh, this break between the periods is going to allow the Kodiaks to regain some momentum, get a little bit more coaching. We have, uh, we have Broncos trying to play. Jean Michel tries to take a shot, missing. Broncos and Kodiaks really struggling to get a grasp of that ball. We have Gunderson throwing the ball in out to Butt, but bringing the ball up for the Kodiaks. Chaz takes a three point shot, missing. Our Kodiaks seem to be off their three point shots today. We have Khalil coming in to take a shot for the Broncos. Chaz steals the ball, bringing it back up the court. Passing it to Butt. Butt out to Johnson. Johnson to Mon. Mon taking a shot, missing. Trying to get the rebound, but misses it. Now we have Shaquille coming up the court with the ball. Passing it to number 10, Dumitz. Mons got the ball, passing it to Johnson. Johnson bringing it up the court for our Kodiaks. Passing it to Mon. Mon gets called on a travel. Dumitz will throw it in. Bedminster's got the ball. Passing it out to Khalil. Danielson's got the ball, bringing it down. Passing it to Taylor. Oh, this is the pass. So passing it back out to Danielson. Danielson to Johnson. Johnson out to Taylor. Gunderson, my bad.
Butts got the ball, tries to shoot, but misses. Ball goes out to number 23, Bedminster. Bedminster to Khalil. Khalil into Jo Michel. Michel to Khalil. Khalil doesn't make a basket. Johnson bringing it up the court. Passing it to Bud. Bud takes a three point shot and makes it for the Cody. Now, it's throws like that that's the reason that the Kodiaks were able to pick up a win over the Broncos last Friday. The Kodiaks have taken the lead once again. They're 25 to 23. Danielson keeps going, taking the ball up the court. Passing it to Johnson. Johnson out to butt. Butt passes it to Mon. Mon gets fouled on from the Broncos. He'll get a two point shot. And Chris Mon getting ready to take a foul shot here. And he he was actually the top scorer in last Friday's game against the Broncos, scoring an amazing 28 points. We'll see if he can carry that on into today. Mon misses his first foul shot, attempting his second now. And he makes it. We have the ball being carried down by Jalapur. Hensman takes a shot and makes it. And that's going to just about tie things up with the teams here. 26 to 25 for the Kodiaks. Johnson's got the ball, passing it to Mon. Mon back out to Johnson. Johnson getting ready, passing it back to Mon. Mon attempts to take a shot, missing. 13 from the Broncos. Hensman gets it. Jalapur carrying the ball down the court for the Broncos. Trying to make a play. Kodiak's trying to steal the ball. Jalapur got the ball back. Travel is being called. But we'll throw the ball back in for the Kodiaks. Passing it to Johnson. Travis takes a three-point shot and makes it. Kodiaks, 29-25. Travis is really good when it comes down to his three-point shots. You know, he's not always accurate, but when it comes, when he's really set, in, when he's, his mind is really set, he seems to make them all. confusion on the court there but now the game seems to be back on track we have Khalil throwing in the ball for the Broncos Van Galen really good on Khalil Passing it right to Travis Butt. Butt tries to take a shot. Gets fouled on. Gets to take two foul shots. Foul goes to number six of the Broncos, Sam Kirkness. Butt makes his first foul shot. And makes his second shot as well. 
Now, this is Bud's fourth year with the Kodiaks, showing that he, ha he has the experience to make the goals when it's necessary. Carl Huffman passes it out to Kirkness. Kirkness to Bedminster. Van Galen has the ball, bringing it up. Van Galen to butt, butt to Johnson. Johnson brings the ball down, trying to make a play out of anything. Passes it to butt. Butt passes it out. Back to butt. And the layup happens. Timeout is called by the Broncos. You can tell Broncos are starting to get a little frustrated. They did have the lead for a little while. Now they're back down. Kodiaks have a 33 to 25 lead. The boys are starting to get back their confidence. They're trying to work their best. But you know, it's still a super close game. Like we were saying in the girls game, at some point it was like this as well, but the Broncos just came back, you know? So as long as our Kodiaks seem to play a lot better, I think that we'll get a better game out of this. With that being said, the Broncos might also come back too, and we might just not be able to play as well as we should be. Yeah, we're just gonna take a look at a highlight from what we just saw. So we have Travis Butt who passes it out back to Travis Butt and taking the layup and making the point. Now that was just the last one to be called right before the timeout. Kodiaks took the 33 lead and hopefully they can just stick with it, keep the points coming and not let the Broncos get ahead of them again. You know, that's really what they need and they need to bring this game back. <laughs> So we have the Broncos coming, throwing the ball in. Jalapur brings the ball up. Jalapur passes it to Khalil. Khalil passes it to Huffman. Huffman out to Bedminster. Bedminster passes it and number 10, Dumitz makes the basket. Travis Butt's got the ball out to Danielson. Danielson out to Butt. Butt gets called on a travel. Timeout called by the Kodiaks. You can tell that the Kodiaks just really want to get this game better prepped. They just just had a timeout being called by the Broncos. Now Kodiaks just called a timeout as well. They really need to get their game down packed. You can tell that Coach Heggie really wants his team to step it up because they're not doing as good as they normally should be doing. Our boys are normally on top of their on top of their points, on top of their team play, and it just seems like they're lacking it once again tonight. All right, we're going to look at a little bit of action from just a moment ago here. We have Bedminster coming in, passing it out to Dumitz. Dumitz making his basket. Now, now, with shots like that, you see why this is the best season that the men's Broncos team has had in quite some time. Uh, this season, they've made an average of 87 points per game, a little bit higher than they usually have. So they're really on their game this season. And they've secured those spots in the ACAC championships along with the Kodiaks. And that's that's a plus, you know, that's all all both teams need, you know, being in college ball, this is what you want. This is the position you want to be in and both teams have it. So they're good. They're set. We have Jalapur bringing the ball up the court. Khalil passing it back out to Jalapur. Jalapur to Bedminster. Bedminster tries to take a shot, missing. Now out to Dumitz. Dumitz steps out. Out to Chase. Chase down to Van Galen. Van Galen out to Jamin. Van Galen.
Galapore coming down the court. Passing it out to Bedminster. Bedminster back to Jalapur. Jalapur taking a three point shot and missing. Drummond out to Tommy. Tommy bringing the ball up the court. Foul being called. Foul called on number seven of the Broncos, Philip Jalapur. Van Galen throwing the ball in out to Chase. Chase trying to bring the ball down, taking his chance at shooting and gets fouled on by number five. Foul's gonna be going to Jacob Simons. Chase makes his basket. Ball's being carried down by number five, Jacob, Jacob Simmons. Khalil takes a shot, gets fouled on. Foul goes to number 11 of the Kodiaks, Phil Jamin. And you can see right there why he's the top scorer in the in the in last Friday's game, making 21 points. Khalil makes both of his foul shots, passing it out to Hickey. Hickey bringing the ball up. Chase has got the ball, looking for someone to help him out on his team. Hickey gets the ball. Tommy's got the ball back, passing it, trying to give it to Danielson. But now Broncos have the ball back. Passing it out to Benminster. Benminster to Dumitz. Danielson goes, staking the ball. Will Hickey going up and making his layup. Ball's going back right away. They're trying to keep this play going as quick as they possibly can. Simons has got the ball, passing it out to Khalil. Khalil takes a shot, missing it. Hickey's got the ball, passing it out to Chase. Chase passes it to Van Galen. We got substitutions for both sides. Finley's back on the court. Finley takes a shot, makes his basket from the side of the court. Got Simons coming down the court with the ball. Passing it to Khalil. Khalil gets the basket. Tommy coming up the court. Going all the way in for his basket, making it again, making a layup for the Kodiaks. Kodiaks are in the lead 40 to 31. We have Simons with the ball once again for the Broncos. Passing it out to Khalil. Dumitz is setting up a screen. Drummond sets up Tommy. Tommy misses it. Khalil's got the ball down for the Broncos. Passing it out to Dumitz. Dumitz takes a shot. Missing. Van Galen has the ball, passing it to Chase. Chase brings the ball up for the Kodiaks, crossing center. Passing it out to Hickey. Hickey passes it out to Jamin. Simon steals the ball from the Broncos, bringing it layups and misses. But we do have a foul being called. Unbelievable. <laughs> 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 Sorry. 
Simons gets to take a foul shot. No pressure. No pressure. You can tell the crowd's really getting into this game here. Simons misses both of his shots. Maybe because of the crowd beefing him so loud. team can be just as loud as anyone else and they're, they're showing 100% support behind the Kodiak's team here. Yeah, you know, once a Kodiak, always a Kodiak, doesn't matter what team you are, you know, and they really show their support, which is awesome, you know. Kodiak fans seem to be one of the, from what I've seen, really great fans, you know. They're constantly up on the teams, they're here to cheer and, you know, with the support of other teams, it's also making right. our boys do really so, sorry, well. Sorry, Alyssa, sorry to interrupt you there, but we're going to take a look at some of the highlights of the game so far. So this is where we have Peter stealing the ball, passing it out to Hickey. Hickey making a layup. Hickey's really good at making his layups, you know. Um, he has a pretty good percentage on his points for when he does play. And, you know, he just he doesn't disappoint the team. And Will is actually, um, he's a third year, and he's from British Columbia, so BC. Passing it out to Hickey. Back to Hickey. There's seven seconds left. Hickey taking a three-point shot, making it. Hickey gets it, and the ball is done. Lucky for Hickey, he did make a basket within the last six seconds of the quarter. Now it's halftime. It was just, it was a great first half of the yep. game. It, it was a great first half of the game, but now we're going to take a look at Lethbridge, Lethbridge College, and the community. Here is E! News. Hello and welcome to E! News at the Half. I'm Eric Mickelson. And I'm Demi Knight and here's our top story. Lethbridge College is constantly finding new ways to give back to both the economy and the environment through continued research at the Aquaculture Centre. I had the opportunity to take a closer look at how the aquaponics facilities partners with industries in practicing applied research. From grass carp, vermicomposting and seed production, the aquaponics facilities here at the college are constantly researching new ways to develop within the composting industry. Aquaculture technician Penny Takahashi says that working with the facilities supplied within the centre helps to give back to the community on a multitude of levels. I guess the biggest thing is that when you're recycling water, you're not using pesticides, insecticides, it's um, it goes through the greenhouse and back out. There's a benefit between fish and plants. However, it's not just the environment that the Aquaponics Centre supports. Head of Research John Dirksen says that by working with the businesses in the agriculture industry, the Aquaponics Centre can help better the efficiency rate of the economy. Sometimes it's not so much about helping the environment, I guess, if it's, a, if it's a business, saving the money or making things more efficient, so I guess that's helping the environment. Uh, anything we do here, from the aquaponics to the recirculation of water and reusing that water, we always have a, an environmental base to that. Many systems here in the greenhouse, such as this grass car production, help with the growth of diverse crops. These crops grow throughout the spring and summer months without the use of harmful chemicals or pesticides. The production of crops is another added element that the Aquaponics Centre works toward achieving, as well as plants and fresh water to give back to the community. The Aquaponics Centre is based around yearly research on new environmentally friendly methods of producing new plants and crops to create a better future. 
After their arena collapsed in November, the Lethbridge Therapeutic Riding Association is looking for community involvement to help get their program up and running again. Sarah Striga went to check up on the horses and the fundraising progress. This empty patch of land is where the Lethbridge Therapeutic Riding Association's arena used to stand. On November 2nd, 2014, after a heavy snowfall, the arena ceiling collapsed shortly after a horse became spooked in the arena for no apparent reason. A few minutes later, after the horse and rider departed, the arena roof fell to the ground. Thankfully, no one was harmed. The Lethbridge Therapeutic Riding Association believes in using horses and horseback riding to maintain a physical, psychological, and recreational activity for people of all ages with disabilities. It gives them muscle exercise that they do, sometimes they don't get. We have programs where you can actually put people that have limited mo mobility onto a horse, like we have the facilities, we have the lifts and everything else like that. So it's, you can take an individual that has no mobility and make them have to work. As the Lethbridge Therapeutic Riding Association is a charitable organization, they are reliant on public support and the involvement of the community. After their arena collapsed, they were unable to continue classes and unfortunately have ceased class schedules until their arena is in better shape. A horse's pelvis is shaped the same as a human pelvis, and so like physically an hour sitting on a horse is the equivalent to walking. So clients that are in wheelchairs, it's the equivalent to them walking for an hour. They're also very therapeutic in the sense they're very calming, they're gentle, and they give a sense of power to the clients, I guess. The Lethbridge Therapeutic Riding Association has been in operation for over 35 years, and with help from the public, it hopes to continue helping the disabled for many more. For E! News, I'm Sarah Striga. If you would like to donate to the Therapeutic Riding Association, you can do so at ltra.ca. Now we'll take a look at this week's Crime Stoppers. Crime Stoppers and Lethbridge Regional Police need your help in solving an armed robbery. On November 26th at 3.01 a.m., a perpetrator entered Gas Camp at 2610 16th Avenue South. He produced a black hunting knife and told the clerk to give him all the money. The suspect is described as a 35 to 40 year old native male, six feet tall and weighing 190 pounds. He was seen being dropped off and picked up in front of the Seventh Day Adventist Church next to Gas Camp. If you have any information on this or any crime, please contact Crime Stoppers. Crime Stoppers will pay up to $2,000 for information leading to an arrest. Remember, you will not have to attend court or testify, and you will remain anonymous. We want your information, not your name. The Lethbridge Hurricanes took time to connect with fans and step out of their element this week, and it was all to support local charities. The Canes are usually busy playing at this time of year, but as Rachel Crow Spreading Wings reports, taking time away from the rink pays dividends not just for the players, but for the community as well. Dinner time at Mr. Mike's Steakhouse. Hungry families are looking for food and to make some new memories together. But when it's Tippecane Night, memories become so much sweeter. Since 2010, Tippecane Night has been part of the many hurricane fundraising events like the Teddy Bear Toss that they take part in to support the community. Defenseman Devin Fafford recently joined the team. This was his first fundraising event and a good opportunity to connect with the city. Anytime we can give back, it's, it's obviously we, we, we get excited about it for sure, opportunity to raise some money for charity, it's an exciting opportunity, it's a good partnership that we have. Mike Winther is also a first timer for the Canes and looks forward to what the night will bring. It's going to be a lot of, a lot of good times and, and laughs, so it should be good. Tippecane has been a wonderful way for many of the players who are new to the team to get out and meet the community that they play for, as well as inspiring the art of giving to organizations like United Way that is responsible for over 20 different charities within our own city. The United Way says partnering with the Canes helps raise awareness and the organization's prominence locally. Part of this community and we really appreciate that uh, they're coming out to support the community uh, by working with us at United Way. Um, they're a fun team, they're great to have around and uh, really looking forward to hanging out with them tonight. 
the team set themselves a goal of $500 in tips from the event. To find out how you can donate to the United Way, visit lethbridgeunitedway.ca. It played a major role in the development of Lethbridge. What is it? Coal mining em employed many people in Lethbridge's early days, but sadly, few people know much about it. Logan Shank provides us with this week's history lesson. As the years passed, the sounds of workers in the coal mines died away. The machinery rusted and became nothing more than antiques. Museum educator for the Galt, Belinda Croson, says that coal played a big role in the development of Lethbridge. From that coal mine, in a sense, Lethbridge would grow. Um, they tried floating coal from Lethbridge to Medicine Hat on uh, river boats, on steamers, but <laughs> our river's not very good for navigation. So they actually built a narrow gauge railway between Lethbridge and Dunmore, Lethbridge and Medicine Hat in 1885. And the fun thing, if you ever want to just kind of confuse people, ask them why the high level bridge is black. Because even though people see it and they have some sense of it, they don't really think about the details and the engineering. But the snow has to get off the bridge. And if it wasn't black, it'd be difficult to melt the snow, especially the you know, heavy wet spring snow. And so it is purposely, um, the walls are purposely put in to provide support for the train so that the wind doesn't push it and for other reasons. And it is an engineering marvel. Remembering our history is important in shaping our future. Statues like this miner are here to remind us of the hard work and dedication that was put into building the city that we know and love today. Although you may never have to climb down a mine shaft, you still have to put in hard work and dedication to work for a better tomorrow. Shortly after World War II, oil and gas production increased, causing coal production to drastically decrease. Galt No. 8 was the last mine left in Lethbridge by 1956. It closed the following year. Now, all that remains are the memories, forever remembered as part of our history. For E! News, I'm Logan Shank. Galt No. 8 was operational for 23 years and produced over 3 million metric tons of coal. It's crazy to think a city like Lethbridge has such a rich, rich history and it's over 100 years old. It is, yeah. It's just weird because, you know, we drive past that bridge every day here in Lethbridge. It's hard to miss and you just don't really know the history that's behind it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I'm Eric Mickelson. And I'm Demi Knight and enjoy the second half of the game. Thank you, Demi and Eric. Welcome back to the Kodiak Action for this afternoon. I'm Melissa Pudbank. And I'm David Opinko. Now, earlier this season, Colby McKee got to sit down and talk to Chris Mon about his college experience as a basketball player and what it meant to be a Kodiak. The big hammer slammer jamma by the big man, Chris Mon. Whether he's finishing off one-handed dunks or making mid-range jump shots, Kodiak center Chris Mon has developed into one of the most versatile big men in all of college basketball. Born in Airdrie, Mon spent much of his childhood growing up in Queen Creek, Arizona, a city of 30,000 plus people and located 45 minutes southeast of Phoenix. Living in the States allowed Mon to develop the love of basketball and get the exposure not recognized in Canada at the time. After graduating from high school, Mon, of Mormon faith, completed a two-year mission which he says impacted his life. That became leadership. I think like I was able to be a leader on my mission. I was able to help people. And I, I think it was like, they always call it like your best two years, right? And I think those two years definitely changed the course of my life. That leadership has allowed Mon to become one of the vocal leaders on this year's edition of the Kodiaks. Assistant coach Don Hugh Lawrence says that Mon has developed his skills both on and off the court. From the first year, he was a little bit raw. His footwork wasn't as good, um, but his leadership was always there. His willingness to learn and his willingness to, to bring the team to the next level, I think, was always there. So I think it's just a continuous growth for him right now. Off the court, Mon has been taking classes in general studies to work towards medical school and becoming a pediatrician but the thought of playing professional basketball remains a dream. Well, I definitely would not turn down professional, right? And it's um, always been a dream as a kid to go play professional. And I think that if I continue improving the way I am and keep on playing to this caliber, I think that it's definitely a possibility. Mon adds that the Kodiaks have the team to advance past the ACAC championships and challenge for the national title. Due to a wild card spot held by the ACAC this year, two teams from the province have the ability to play for the national title, which is held in mid-March. 
Colby McKee, E! News. Chris Vaughn has made about 15.6 points per game and is also the highest for his team. He has also made 138 field goals, which is 53% of all attempts. Speaking of impressive, we're going to take a look at some of tonight's impressive action. We have Khalil Diaz down here about to get the play ready to go. Chris Tommy coming out to take the ball. Now he passes it out to Will, uh, to not Will, my bad, to uh, Robbie Finlay <laughs> making it, making the basket. Now Robbie Finlay is only a second year player. He is from Vulcan, Alberta, so he's originally uh, Alberta boy, really close to here. But, you know, he's got a fairly good game on his shoulders. He doesn't play overly too often, but when he steps onto the court, he knows where he needs to be and what he needs to oh, do. Absolutely. So how, do you think that the Kodiaks are going to be able to maintain their momentum in the second half of this game? I think so. I think they finally got the swing of, the, of their game so far. Um, they were lacking it a little bit in the first quarter. But now, now that the second quarter is done and they have the lead, I feel like they're more confident. And even with this halftime, for them to go sit down with their coach, discuss some things, I feel like this might have gave them even that much more motivation to sit down and be like, what have we been doing wrong? What have we been doing right? And what do we need to work on? Yeah, now we're going to take a look at another three-pointer made today. We got Tommy passing it out to Will. Will back. Tommy and then back to Will, back to Tommy, back to Will. And another three point shot made by Will oh, Hickey beautiful right off of the shot. backboard. You know, Will Hickey, you can tell in that three point shot, he chose to choose for the box on the basket, got it right in the right hand corner on the top. And that's always a prime spot to aim when you're trying to shoot. You know, that's normally where you want to angle it off of. And he did that. And Will Hickey is really good for that. He's really good for his three point shots. So what do you think the Broncos have to do to, to, to catch up to the Kodiaks here? I think that they just, you know, Broncos have been playing a really good game. They've been playing tough D. They're on them. They're on the Kodiaks. They just need to stay on them, make more baskets, you know, maybe getting some outside shots instead. They seem to be making a lot of inbound shots in the key. Um, I just feel like they need to step up, get their three-point shooters out. It doesn't seem like our Kodiaks are really on the ball when it comes to three-point shooters. So I feel like if that was anything for the Broncos, that's what they need to do. They need to start making some more three-point shots. All right, and you see as we're about to get ready to head back into the action, both the, both the coaches for the Kodiaks and the Broncos giving the teams a little bit of last-minute advice, make sure that they're ready to go for the second half of this game because the second half of this game is going to be really important in building some very valuable momentum. Yeah, they do. They need all of the motivation that they possibly can get. You know, this is, the, like we were saying, their last game at home before the championships, and they really need to step it up. They really need to work on their team skills. You know, like we were seeing in the girls' game, they were, lo they were lacking a lot of teamwork, and even the boys' game right now, I feel the same way. They, they aren't playing as as much or as or well aren't as, as much as a cohesive yeah, unit as they usually are. Exactly, and you know, but you know what, I still think they're playing better than the women's team. Even though they are winning, that's not just, I feel like they're team-wise, they're playing better together than they were when the females were playing today. Yeah. All right, so we have Chaz Johnson's got the ball, bringing it down for the Kodiaks. Passing it to Butt. Butt passes it out to Danielson. Danielson passes it down to Gunderson. We got Danielson throwing in for the Kodiaks. Khalil tries to attempt to get the ball, knocking it out. Chaz Johnson's got the ball, trying to shoot. Foul goes to number nine, Khalil. Oh, Hardy moves over. They're fighting. <laughs> Johnson makes his first three free throw. 
Makes his second one. Khalil's got the ball, bringing it down for the Broncos. Danielson on him. All the Kodiaks on him. He makes his shot from the free throw line. But taking the ball down the court, passing it out to Mon. Mon taking a shot, making his shot. Just short of a three pointer. But steals the ball from Jala Fort, but goes in to do a layup and makes it. What have we done? Looks like that little break at halftime gave the Kodiaks just enough time to get their focus back, get their energy back, and just get back in the team spirit. Now we have Jalapur taking the ball for his team, passing it to Khalil. Khalil bringing the ball in, passing it out to Jalapur. Back to Jalapur. Out to Simon. Simon to Dumitz. Dumitz taking a shot and missing it. Chris has got the ball, passing it to Johnson. Johnson bringing it up. Butts got the ball, passing it to Mon. Mon fumbles it, passing it to the Broncos. Now Khalil's got it, bringing it up. Ma missing his shot. Gunderson passes it to Johnson. Johnson's bringing it up once again for the Kodiaks. We got a foul being called on the Kodiaks. Khalil's got the ball. Making an attempt at the basket, missing it. Coming down the court now is Gunderson. Gunderson to Bud, Bud to Johnson. Danielson's got the ball. Being covered by Jalapur. Danielson takes a shot. Oh! And right as the shot clock's about to run out, makes a beautiful three-pointer. The crowd is going wild. We just got two back-to-back -back points there. It's impressive. It is. You know, that's the nice thing about Johnson. Johnson's always ready for the ball. You know, we had we had Danielson make his three-pointer. Broncos tried to throw the ball back in. Johnson stole the ball and made a basket right off it. Within seconds, we had two points, one after the other. Incredible. But passes it out to Johnson. Johnson to Mon, Mon back to Johnson. Johnson attempts to make a three-point shot. Missing it. So now we have Broncos have possession. Passing it to Simon. Simon's to Jalapur. Back to Simon. Simon taking a shot. Missing it. Back out to Jalapur. Jalapur takes a shot. Missing. Johnson's got the shot. Bringing it down for the Kodiaks. Passing it out to Bud. Bud takes a three point shot. Makes it. <laughs> Like we were saying earlier, when you asked me what I thought that Broncos could do, well, Kodiaks are doing what I said, <laughs> so that's a plus. You know, they're they're There's taking. There's a reason that the Kodiaks are one of the top teams in the entire division right now. Oh! Getting shot down. The Kodiaks have regained their swagger. Yes, they have. They're in the lead, 57 to 33, and they need to keep it up. We got Danielson about to take a shot for a technical. Makes it. All right, now the game's gonna go back to where we were. We have Butt taking the ball. <laughs> Pass.
passing it out to Johnson. Johnson bringing the ball up. Out to Danielson. Danielson to Murray. Murray gets the layup. Bringing the Kodiaks up, 59 to 33. Broncos passing it around. We got Khalil throwing the ball into Jal Jalapur. Jalapur brings it around, trying to take a three-point shot, missing it. Joe Michel throws it out to Khalil. Khalil makes his basket. Johnson bringing it down for the Kodiaks, getting everyone set up, passes it out to Murray. Murray to Butt. Butt takes another three-point shot and makes it. Jalapur takes a shot, missing it for the Broncos. Foul goes to number 14 of the Kodiaks, Colton Murray. Broncos throw the ball out to Bedminster. Bedminster to Khalil. Khalil goes in to shoot, makes his layup. We got Johnson carrying the ball up, tossing it to Danielson. Danielson throws it out to Murray. Murray throws it to Butt. Steps out. And but stepped out of bounds. Now we have Joe Michel throwing the ball in. Passing it to Bedminster. Baskets made from the Broncos. Johnson passes it to Murray. Murray brings the ball down, passing it to Danielson. Back to Murray. Murray to Johnson. Taylor tries to take a shot, missing it. Ben Minster's got the ball down in the court for the Broncos, passing it out to Jalapur for a three-point shot, missing. Jalapur retrieves the ball once again, passing it out to Bedminster. Bedminster to Khalil. Khalil to Jalapur, and foul called on number five of the Kodiaks, Travis Butt. Timeout called by the Kodiaks. Now Kodiaks have a fairly big lead right now. They are 63 to 39. If they just keep up this momentum, keep up their three point shots, keep up all of their free throws, I feel like they might have a really good opportunity to stay ahead of the game. Absolutely, and you can tell there's, there's a lot of hustle here by both teams. This game's really important to everyone. You can tell that they're running just a little bit faster than they normally do jumping just a little higher than they normally do. And it's it's just been a really exciting game for everyone watching. That's exactly it. And you know, with like we were saying about our Kodiak teams, you know, they're fairly, they have a quite right, a bit in number. So, sorry to cut you off there, Alyssa. We're just gonna take a little look at some of the action we just saw. So we have Ben Minster with the ball for the Broncos, taking a shot from three free throw point and making it. Now Ben Minster on this team, he seems to be a really well-rounded player. He is a third year. He's from Hamilton, Ontario, and he originally actually played for Nate. So we have the game action coming back on. Kodiaks are ready to go, ready to finish off this last this quarter. Jalapur makes his first free throw. <coughs> and misses his second one. Passing it over to Butt. Butt passes it to Murray. Murray down to Tommy. 
Tomi out to Hickey. Hickey into Murray. Murray goes up and makes his throw. Here comes another foul shot for the Kodiaks. Minster to Jalapur. Jalapur back to Ben Minster. Out to Jalapur, back to Ben Minster, back to Jalapur. And back to Ben Minster. <laughs> and then Jalapur again. <laughs> they make the basket. Jalapur gets the point for the Broncos. Jalaport has the ball, making a play with Bedminster. Jalaport takes a three-point shot, missing it. Brings it to Chase. Chase is bringing it down for the thing. Out to Travis. Travis trying to make a shot. Bedminster carrying the ball up for the team. Khalil takes a shot, missing it, but getting a foul so that now he can take a foul shot. <laughs> Khalil misses his shot. Makes his free throw. Murray passes it out to Tommy. Tommy brings it over center. Going all the way in, making a shot. Shut down by number seven. Out to Khalil. makes his basket. They showing there why he is the Kodiak's, uh, sorry, the Broncos' top scorer. Ball goes out of hand of the Kodiak's, so now we got the Broncos bringing him in. Khalil to Ben Minster. Khalil takes a three-point shot, makes it. Out to Murray. Murray brings it in. Ball goes out to Hickey. Hickey misses his three-point shot. Murray steals the ball. Out to Van Galen. Van Galen to Taylor. Taylor to Tommy. Tommy to Hickey. And now we got a foul. We got a foul going to number nine, Khalil Fiaz. Hickey makes his first shot.
Kodiak's trying to recover the ball, playing fumble with it. Van Galen shuts them down. Passing it to Chase. Hickey being cornered, passing it out to Taylor. No basket, passing it out to Van Galen. To Chase, to nine. Chase has got the ball, passing it to Hickey. Hickey makes the layup. Jalapur bringing the ball down. 30 seconds left in the third quarter. Joe Michette has the ball for the Broncos. Oh. Trying to make a shot, missing. Show me Shen making a second shot. Didn't make it. Cody actually is trying to get the ball back over. Van Galen bringing it, passing it to Taylor. Taylor makes the basket. And that's the end of the third. So now the Kodiaks had 70 and we had the Broncos at 49. Now we have a pretty substantial lead on the Broncos, but you know, everything's up in the air, you know. Um, it's everyone's shot at winning. And everyone wants pizza. The crowd is just going crazy here. We got some free pizza up for grabs. I love me a good pizza. Yeah. So, like we were saying before, you know, Kodiaks, they really stepped it up now. They know what they've been doing wrong. They're, they've fixed it. I mean, obviously they fixed it. They're already up by, they're at 70, and, you know, Broncos aren't even at 50. They have more than 20 points ahead, so. You think the Broncos can catch up being 21 points behind? I think so. You know, it's not that hard for every basket. It's two points, so it's not as hard as you think it is, but. All right, and uh, we're going to take a look at some of the action that we just saw in the third quarter of the game. This is the one we had Van Galen. Passing it down, still making the shot. Our Kodiaks are really good at that, you know. They're really good at in inside the key shots. They're also really good at outside of the key shots. You know, they're all... They're just a in, good team all together. Exactly, and all around. not to take anything away from the Broncos. They, they're, they're one of the top teams in the division as well. Yeah, no, they are for sure. You know, I think this is a really good matchup for our boys. Um, they're really bringing some excitement to the court, and uh, hopefully they can just keep it up. All right, and, and we're just keep going. Sorry, Alyssa, we're just going to take another look at some of the action here. We have Travis Butt taking a three point shot and making it. Now, Travis also is really good, like we were saying before, at making these three point shots. He is a fourth year, he's had his experience here, and you know, he knows what his limits are. And obviously, three point shots aren't. Well, everyone on the team has their strengths. Some are a lot better at three pointers, some are better defensemen. So you can't judge every single player on every single characteristic. Exactly, that's exactly right. Now we have a foul shot coming from Jalapur. Makes his first shot. And he makes his second shot as well. Crowd trying to throw him off his game a little bit, but they were unsuccessful. 
So we have Travis Butt coming down the court with the ball. Passing it out to Gunderson, to Mon. Back to Gunderson. Back to Mon. Passing it to Johnson. Johnson's bringing it in. Broncos get possession of the ball. We got Jalaport carrying the ball around, trying to make the right pass. Passes it to Khalil. Khalil brings the ball in. Taking a shot, missing. Bringing it out to Johnson. Johnson's bringing it up the court for the Kodiaks. Chris Mon tries a shooting. It's unsuccessful, but number seven, Gunderson, gets it. 13 takes a three point shot, misses. Out to Danielson. Danielson out to Johnson. Johnson attempts a shot and makes it. We have Jalapur bringing the ball down for his team, trying to make a play, passing it to Khalil. Khalil back to Jalapur. Got some substitutions for, or a timeout, my bad. Now this time, I feel like Broncos have this opportunity to, the coach of the Broncos has this opportunity to let his team know that, you know, they really need to pick it up if they want to come back. Um, they are 20 points down. They really need to do a lot better um, and just make better plays, smarter decisions, and get on top of stuff like that. Yeah, so you see the coach of the Broncos there trying to give some last minute advice to the, to his team. Uh, but first, we're just going to see a little bit of what the Broncos have done so far. So when Chalopur passes it out to Khalil, Khalil takes a three point shot, making it. You can tell that Khalil has pretty good form when it comes to his three point shots. You tell that his arc is up there, but you know, just in general, you can tell that all of his force is coming from his legs. He gets down, he gets low when he's about to make his three-point shot, and that's what you need. You need to make sure that you know where your force is coming from and that you can control it. Absolutely. He knew exactly what he was doing, and he saw the coach there just trying to give some more advice to the team, make sure they know exactly what they're doing, because we've got about eight and a half minutes left in the game, and the Broncos are down by 23 points. See if they can... See if they can catch up in the last little bit here. Got Ben Minster makes a basket. Johnson attempts at making a shot. Johnson makes his first shot and makes it. Coming up, second one. Makes that one as well. Johnson's really not one to let the team down. He does plays his hardest out when he's on the court, and that's what Kodiak's need. We got Simons with the ball, passing it out to Heinzman. Heinzman to Benminster. Benminster tries to shoot, misses. Johnson's got the ball now for the Kodiaks. Passes it out to Danielson. Danielson takes a shot, misses it by just a hair. Benminster has the ball. Johnson takes the ball away, passing it down to, oh. oh. We have a charge called on. Chris Mon. We got a foul shot coming up. Sorry, not a foul shot. 
Benminster's got the ball, bringing it up. Got substitutions for the Kodiaks. Colton Murray stepping onto the court. Chris Vaughn is now sitting. Simons has the ball for the Broncos. Heinzman tries to take a shot, missing it. Johnson stepping out of bounds. Kyle Huffman has the ball, passing it out to Bedminster. Bedminster out to Heinzman. Heinzman tries to take a shot, missing it. Johnson's got the ball. Murray's got the ball, trying to bring it in, passing it out to Danielson. Danielson taking a shot, missing it by just a little bit. Passing it on to the Broncos. Ben Minster's got it. Passing it out all the way to number 13. Anthony Heinzman. Travis Butt steals the ball, bringing it down, going for the layup. shot and misses it. There we go, makes his second one. We got Joe Michel throwing the ball in, passing it to Bedminster. Bedminster bringing the ball in, attempting a shot, missing it. Ball goes off of Colton Murray's feet. Ball goes out to number 11, Ben Koch. We got another shot coming for the Broncos. Khalil makes his first basket. Second one. Danielson gets the ball, passing it out to Johnson. Johnson to Murray. Show me Shed has the ball. Khalil attempts a shot, missing it. Johnson takes advantage of that, grabbing the ball for the Kodiaks. Now out to Taylor. Taylor to Johnson. Johnson to Butt. Butt back to Taylor. Taylor takes a shot and makes it. And about five minutes left in the last in the last period of the game. Kodiaks are up by 24 points. 79 to 55. We got Ben Minster taking the ball in, trying to pass it around, passing it to Joe Michel. Joe Michel passes it to Simons. Back to Ben Minster, to Khalil. Khalil takes a three-point shot. Simons gets the ball, passing it back out to Khalil. Kodiak's really trying to get the ball out of the Broncos' hands. Can't make it. Now they do. Now Danielson's coming down the court with it. Travis Butt right there too, bringing it up, making the basket. Good teamwork on those two spark, Colton Murray and Travis Butt, all teamwork there. Joe Michel has the ball, making a basket. 
Olds is realizing that they don't have a lot of time to make up a pretty significant difference in score, so you can see that they're working even harder than they normally do. We got Johnson with the ball, bringing it down, bringing it up, making another layup. We got Ben Minster bringing the foul goes to number six, Chaz Johnson of the Kodiaks. We see the crowd here firmly in support of the Kodiaks. Joe Michel has the ball, bringing it out to Simons. Basket's good, got a foul shot coming up. Hagee of the Kodiaks wasn't really sure what was going on there, wasn't sure why the call was being made against them. All right, so we got the ball out to Taylor now, out to Tommy. Tommy trying to take it in. Taking a shot, making it. Now we got number five, Jacob Simons bringing the ball up. Back out to Simons, Simons passing it to Michelle. Michel out to Kirkness. Kirkness back to Michel. Michel misses it twice on his rebounds. Taylor out to Tomi. Tomi brings the ball up for the Kodiaks. Back to Taylor, back to Tomi. Trying to make a play here, trying to think what he can do. Out to Taylor, passing it to Will Hickey. Three seconds left to shoot. Making oh, a shot. Beautiful three-pointer. That was Pierce Michel. Show me shot tries to take it Oh, slam dunk. Number 12 of the Broncos. So we have a timeout. Like they were saying, this is Peter Danielson's last home game. He's been here for, he's been playing this type of ball for about five years, and he chose to end it off on a good team here in Lethbridge. How good was that slam dunk we saw just a moment ago? Yes, you know, Joe Michel really shows, he really shows his team effort, you know. They seem, Broncos seem to be a very well-rounded team. They seem to know what they want to do. Um, unfortunately, well, I guess it's better for us Kodiaks, but unfortunately for the Broncos, they are still down. They need to keep up with it, um, but that's just what, what you know. That's what sports are. You know, there is a winner and there is a loser. You can both be winners. So I guess we'll just see who comes out on top, and hopefully it's our Kodiaks. Well, I think either way, I think the Broncos might have just had the play of the game right there. I agree. That was awesome. But now we got the Kodiaks coming back on the court. We got Will Hickey throwing the ball in. Chase has the ball, passing it to Hickey. Hickey down to Finley, Finley to Tommy. Tommy back to Finley. Finley taking a shot, missing. Simons has got the ball, bringing it up for the Broncos. Oh, back to Simon. Simon makes a shot, missing it. Kodiak ball. Oh, 
fumble there by 21. It just lost control of that. All right, so now it's time for the Broncos to have the ball. We've got another timeout called. Time to think about what's going to happen, you know. This is always the time of game when they need to discuss what's going to happen. Coming up, they only have a little bit left in the game. Broncos are down by quite a bit. And, you know, it's easy to catch up. But at the same time, if the Kodiaks keep playing the way they're playing, that's the best opportunity for us to just keep going, keep trying. And if that's what happens, Yeah, absolutely. So we're just going to take a look at some of the action we saw here just a moment ago. So we got Jalapur to Benminster. Benminster back to Jalapur. Back to Benminster. Back to Jalapur. Jalapur takes the shot, making the basket. You know, he's really, between Benminster and Jalapur, you can tell that they really coincide. They really depend on each other. And that's a good thing when you're looking for it in a teammate. Absolutely. But the real question is, with just under two minutes left, can the Broncos make even somewhat of a comeback? Is, is, is all hope lost for them, or do you think they might be able to do it? You can tell that Broncos coach is not overly impressed. He really wanted another timeout. Got a three-point basket scored by number six, Sam Kirk. Impressed, with, impressed by that. <laughs> Little bit. Ball out to Tommy. Tommy to Finley. Finley down to Murray. Murray makes his basket. Simons has got the ball. Simon's bringing it out to Kirkness. Kirkness down to Koch. Koch making a basket. Got a substitution Hickey going off and Van Galen coming on. Broncos coach giving some pretty harsh advice to his teammates, team members. There we go, we got a basket scored by Chase Tony. Ball goes out to Kirkness, Kirkness to Michel. Number 11 there for the Kodiaks. Got a pretty bad nosebleed over there. He's been taking, taking aside to take care of that. Joe Michel takes a shot. And misses his second one. Kodiaks trying to retrieve the ball, missing it. Shut down by our Kodiak boys. Tommy bringing the ball down. Attempting a shot, missing. We got a shot for Chase. Baskets missed. There we go, made his second basket. Just under 30 seconds now. Kodiaks are up 93 to 68. Ball goes out to Joe Michel. Joe Michel to Kirkness. Kirkness makes a three point basket. Kodiak's just wasting some time there until the clock runs out. That's exactly it. Yeah, you know, Kodiak's won this game 93 to 71. They've been doing super good. Really showed what teamwork is all about. Well, fans, that's the ball game. The final score is Kodiak's 93 and the old Broncos 71. Coming up, we're going to have the players of the games. 
Who do you think is going to be the player of the game? Pardon me? Who do you think is going to be the player of the game? <sighs> it, it, it's really hard to say. There's been uh, quite a few players who've done such a good job this game. Mm -hmm. A lot of people working really well together. So yeah. I'm, I'm not entirely sure yet. What, what do you think? I feel like it might either be Peter Danielson since it's his last game or it's going to be Travis Butt. But I feel like it's going to be Peter since it's his last home game. Yeah. And then for the other team, it's either going to be Khalil or Joe Michel. Yeah, there we go, Khalil. All right, so Khalil Faiz makes player of the game. And there we go, like I said, number five, Travis Butt. Kodiaks have been doing so well this season, you know, and this is just another thing to have on top of that. With another win, they can expect to be going in with a lot of confidence into this upcoming playoffs. They have a really huge opportunity of being winners. And with that being said, Kodiaks might go all the way, both girls and males. Here's a replay with coming up. So we got Danielson down to Johnson. Johnson shooting from the top of the key, making the basket. Johnson's always been really good at stuff like that. He make, makes most of his shots. He's really good for that. And, you know, that's just another, another good thing about the Kodiaks. You know, they have a really well-rounded team. They're making it really plus, and they're doing really well. So, Really good guys. So now coming up, their playoffs are coming up. And with that being said, they're going to be practicing a lot. They're going to be trying their very best to get going. And hopefully in the end, that's going to work, what's going to work out best for them. So now we've got another replay coming up. We got, there we go. Well, the Kodiaks made the basket also and a big topple. But going up, we have David Opinko. Just a moment. <laughs> All right, we're here with uh, number five from the Kodiaks, Travis Butt. So, Travis, uh, do you feel like the Kodiaks had um, anything extra to prove, considering that the women faced one of their first few losses this season today? Uh, we try to win regardless of whether they do. They've been beating us all year. <laughs> it's rare for this to happen, but I'm glad we got the win. Absolutely. Um, so, getting uh, past there. So, do you feel like... Um, the, the momentum you got from this win will go a long way in uh, the ACAC championships? Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it'll help us with, with a win going in, but anything can happen there. So hopefully we're playing good then because that's when it matters. All right, do you, really, do you think that you can take home the ACAC championships this year? Oh, for sure. We got a good chance this year. But anything can happen. It's up for our grabs. The fourth seed can win it. The first seed can win it. So. Absolutely. So thank you so much, Travis, yeah. for joining us. <laughs> well, now let's send it back to Alyssa, back at the desk. Alyssa? Well, there you have it, folks. Kodiaks played their best. They came out on top. They won both of their games this weekend. Women won one and lost one. And in the end, that's all they possibly needed. So that being said, Kodiaks are going to keep a fairly high lead, and that's it. So that's the game for tonight. Have a great evening.